The build continues for this 65,000 mile 1984 BMW 318i. This episode, the E30 is getting a brake overhaul. We're replacing both rear wheel cylinders with new shoes, new hardware kit, new drums. We're also replacing four different brake hoses and bleeding and flushing all the brake fluid in this car. We're also tearing into the gauge cluster to replace our odometer gears. We're getting the wipers to work again and we're attempting to fix our radio issue. So let's get started. Now before we start tearing into this brake system, I figured we should try to start the day on a win. So let's throw this intermittent wiper relay into the junction box and see if we get wipers again. Let's get this lined up. Oh, look at that. It's already working. Holy cow. Plug it in all the way. Oh, that's funky. Well, the relay is stuttering and the wiper arms are slowly moving. So we have wipers, which is good and they kind of stop, but they were kind of going on their own. See that? They're moving on their own. Bumping the switch down and look at that. So maybe the wiper switch is shorting out and sending power to the relay when it shouldn't be. Or maybe that was them finding their home location back at the bottom. See, it's still stuttery. They're working. On fast, they do a little bit better. Then I click it down and look at that stutter. Let's see if it stutters all the way home. They made it home though, which is good. Maybe they're supposed to do that. Well, they're working and so it's not a complete failure. We still had some success, but the wiper system is definitely gonna need a little bit more diagnosis. That's good enough for today. Let's jump into these brakes and make some real progress. I stripped out one of these. I think it was this one, so we might have to extract it. Top spring out. I don't have repair instructions pulled up. I'm just gonna kinda wing it until I get stuck or confused and We'll kind of go from there, but I'm going to try to keep everything the way it's supposed to. That rod goes across, go into there, and that's the adjuster. And then that's our parking brake. There's our backing pin, second pin. Wheel bearing feels good. I think that means it's time to pull the wheel cylinder. Looks to be an 11 millimeter for this brake line going to the wheel cylinder. Let's use a line wrench on there. 10 millimeter to break this wheel bearing or this uh, wheel cylinder loose. Leaking seals. Take a look at all. Take a look at all that garbage in there can't be relying on that if you want good quality brakes. Look at all that crud and garbage built up in those pistons. I just want to get in there and I want to scrub all this surface clean. I'm going to need some brake cleaner to get all this cleaned up. So let's go make a part store run real quick. I didn't just get a couple cans. I got a whole case. Hopefully this will last me more than a couple days. Now it's time to get these brakes scrubbed up. We're going to run in our mounting screws. Don't want to wail on that brake line until we have this thing mounted securely. Eleven mil. What comes in this box of shoes? Oh no. These are the wrong brake shoes. Here's our original brake shoes. Here's the ones they sent me. I better open up the box for the drums too. See if those are accurate. Let's check the drums. The drums look to be correct. I'm gonna call some local shops real quick and see how fast they can get me some brake shoes. They can source me some shoes that seem to be the correct one, but they're not gonna show up until next Monday. So I'm gonna put these back together with the old shoes 
but with new hardware. Right now I'm just putting some pure nickel special on the contact points for the shoes. Pure nickel special, never sees. It's good to 2400 degrees. I hardly ever use it because I don't grease BMW brakes for that matter. Now I gotta figure out how this freaking contraption goes back together. Even these new brake springs from ATE, the hardware kit, wrong size. His brake job is just not going the way I anticipated today. What am I missing though? That shouldn't be that loose. This was supposed to be gravy. I was gonna knock this one out of the park, or so I thought. It's actually kind of a perfect fit right there. This other side, I think I'm gonna leave complete until I get the replacement shoes as well. That way I don't have to do this side twice. But the other one, I had it taken apart. I wanted to put it back together, keep all the parts where they're supposed to be. I really wanna salvage a win for today. Since we can't do the drums, I was thinking let's do the brake hoses. So we got this union down here for the rear left brake hose, but the other end of it is directly above this rear end cross member. You can see the nut right up there that I need to get busted loose. And this panel right here runs all the way down and protects the entire fuel tank. Um, I think I might be able to do it, but what I'm thinking is, let's start in the front and let's bust these front brake lines loose. They look easy enough. We'll get a feel for them and then maybe we'll have the courage to tackle the rear today. Okay, top is loose. Catch that one with an open end. Brake hose is out. Now we repeat. Caliper end goes in first. That way we can twist it in. Get this top end fitted back in. Brake hose is in. Clean this up with some brake parts cleaner. You can also use water and water will neutralize the effects of brake fluid because brake fluid can be pretty corrosive on paint and stuff like that. Thread our new hose in. Now we're gonna have a bunch of air in the lines, but don't worry, we're gonna bleed this thing properly. So I bumped the jack stands up to give myself some more room before jumping into this. I'm gonna have to set you guys up out of the way a little bit, probably get a view back here, and I'm gonna bust these back lines loose first. That way once I bust that front tight fitting loose, I can take the hose and spin it off while holding that collar with a wrench. I got about an hour before I get too hungry and frustrated trying to do these brake hoses, so wish me luck. I'm already getting too hungry for this job. It's not a good sign. I'm running on a peanut butter jelly sandwich and a protein shake. Come on, baby. Yes. Yes. It's working. Yeah. She's tight. And crushed it on that one, dude. Yeah.
Yeah, buddy. <sighs> Tight. All right, guys. We got the brake hoses done. Nice. That wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. That is a win. Come on, Sage. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Get him. Go get him. Go get him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ready to go back? Come on. All right, we got our priorities straight again. I had to spend a day or two sorting out my realtor Phil's Honda CRV. He had some misfires, also needed a trailer hitch installation. Last point I left off, I had just finished getting these rear brake hoses installed on the E30. So now I'm thinking we will jump into the gauge cluster. I received the replacement odometer gear, so let's tear into that gauge cluster, see if we can get that fixed up. Back into the gauge cluster we go. I left it pulled out from when we did our diagnosis. So let's flip this girl back over. We're gonna be getting back into the speedo here. Here is our gauge cluster with the front cover off. I just loosely put this hardware back in. And there we go. So here's the company I got the Speedo gears from in case you are curious, it's for the VDO cluster. So I got the hardware removed from this cover, but on this unit, it has this secondary board that runs across here and it clips into this cover, I believe. Because I've been levering it off and um, it's taking this thing with it. That means I need to disconnect it from this plastic cover here, which is just sketchy. Sketch. We got a piece of gear here up top. This gear right here, I believe, is this one. And this gear here, I think, is this one. Yeah, these are old. They need to go. This thing just fell apart. This is nerve-wracking stuff, though. Because when I lift it up here, it wanted to pull the whole shaft out. I can just squeeze it with pliers, and it just turns to mush. <gasps> This should be the replacement for this one. I'm just going to break this thing off like a wafer. Look at that plastic. It's just falling apart. Reinstall this one before I forget its position. I'm going to drop back down. That meshes. I guess we got to cut this brass bushing out. Got to push this circuit board out a little bit. Okay. That's in. Spins freely. Our smallest gear of them all. Our culprit. So let's rotate this. Everything seems to be moving. And now we need to check to see if our odometer spins and that's backwards go this way we got our trip odometer at the bottom and we're getting rotation that six is starting to move we got a seven I got a little bit of a finger smudge here so I'm just gonna clean this face a little bit This thing was tricky, and the video that I was watching did not have this little plate up top. Got 
can put the speedo back in. Drop her back in. All right, good to go. Let's get this thing back in the car. Okay. So it's this screw, this thumb screw. It's a little rough. I'm gonna have to tap it. Five by point eight. Now, in case any of you guys are not familiar with the tap and die kit, this is a tap and it has threads so you can chase and cut new threads on a piece of hardware that's damaged. And this is a die, same concept but in reverse. You can thread this on to a bolt or a stud and you can cut new threads or clean up existing threads. So it's a tap and die kit. Now we can check operation on here again. Should be buttery smooth, look at that. These were super stiff last time. And now they spin on with ease. Gotta love it. Nice clean threads on both ends. Oh, by the way, I'm going to register for SEMA tonight. Um, I figured it would be a cool idea to go there and potentially network. If any of you guys are going to go to SEMA, let me know. Maybe we can get together, do a little meetup. Howdy, Phil. Yeah, I just finished replacing the uh, gear for the odometer. It's got a manual odometer. And the gear had broken and failed. So it had stopped counting. All right, let's check to see if we got power to the cluster. Aye, aye, aye. Turn that radio off. Right on, everything looks good. We got inspection light, brake light. Parking brake light. See high beam indicator. Good. Cool, besides running the car, um, that's about as good as we're going to get. I reset the trip indicator and uh, we should be good to go. Now, the next thing I want to do before I call it a day is try to get this radio out because according to you guys, I can service this volume potentiometer, um, but the E30 radio instructions I'm seeing online are different. The other ones have a little hex key here. And if you see right here, you got evidence of someone trying to get this radio out in the past little bit of what looks like super glue up there as well so someone really wailed on this thing trying to get it out ended up cracking the faceplate there and put a couple small mars if i zoom out you can barely even see them anyways i'm thinking i might need to try to get this faceplate off first hopefully there'll be some hardware underneath but it looks like it can come off pretty easy let's see if we can do a better job than the last guy there we go there's our face. Oh, there goes their super glue. Yeah, it's locked in. Ah, there's little locks right here. That little tab went down. This one went down. All right, there we go. So there's the antenna. Oh. 
Okay, we got it out. I sure do love this camera angle when I'm working on my toolbox. Seeing these little tabs right here should indicate that this faceplate can come off. Never taken the faceplate off a radio like this. Whoop, we lost something. So you guys are saying this volume potentiometer right here can get cleaned, huh? Well, we're going to find out. CCX91, you were talking about ACF50. I ordered some on Amazon. I got some here. I'm going to give it a shot. There are so many comments that I could mention on here, guys, about all of you guys replying about the volume potentiometer. So um, we're going to see if this stuff works. You can see the volume knob moves independently here from this little fader switch that goes left to right. I'm just going to sneak a little squirt in there. There we go. And just rotate this thing like crazy. Dan Builds, you were talking about uh, just moving it back like crazy just to kind of clean out any debris or buildup that's in there. And I tried that and I still wasn't successful. So I'm moving to the solution. The anti-corrosion ACF50 solution. We'll see if it works. Keep working it. I'm going to give this 100 count. All right, she's worked in. Let's get this faceplate back on. I'm gonna need another one of these little chingaderas if this works. Let's see. That should be radio. Well, we have, it's better. But it's, it's still pretty shot. We still have a lot of feedback through the volume. Yeah, so I'm going to have to pull it, take it to a radio shop, I think, see if they can work their magic, because I really want to keep the original radio. It's really good looking, and uh, it's just cool. I love the old classic original cassette tape deck, and I want to keep it. I'll leave the little repair broken there, because I'm going to be pulling it out again, and we'll get it glued up when it's done, but... So there we go. We're probably going to need a new potentiometer or uh, someone else had commented. Let me go see what they said. So here XXXXX 2147 says radio amplifier normally fails on BMW. That's why you have that issue. Maybe it's that. We'll see. I think I'm going to pull it out, take it to a radio shop, see if they can fix it up. Sage is getting a little spa day tonight. We went and hit the river yesterday. I wish I would have gotten a video, guys. This dog went swimming down river. And we were swimming with her, and then she started booking it downstream, and she hit this rapid section, and all of a sudden, I just see her head just go and get sucked down the rapids, out of sight, down this bend. So I go running on the shoreline trying to chase her, and she got sucked down through a little rapid section, and she crawled out on this big, steep, craggy rock. It was crazy. I got super spooked, though. I was scared I was going to lose her. She was going to drown, but she's all good. She's going to get a little spa night tonight. She's due for a bath. We're going to put some coconut oil on her paws. She's starting to get cracked up a little bit. We're going to brush her teeth. We're going to get her all tuned up. Huh? Yeah. We're going to give you a spa night tonight. Yeah.
All right, guys, we're back. We have a correct brake hardware kit for the rear drums. We also have a new set of shoes that'll actually fit. So let's get this thing finished up. So this adjuster turns, and as this adjuster turns, it pushes this fork out. This fork spreads the diameter between the two shoes. That's how you adjust your uh, drum tightness on this, on this uh, setup. These look like the correct shoes. Oh, got it. Okay. And check out how stout this backing plate is. Any modern BMW, this thing would be rotted out with this much age, but just goes to show old, good quality metal on these older cars just makes them last so much longer. There we go. Whoo! Guys, that sucked. My back needs a rest. Ugh. Yeah, this drum fits. Right now we're tightening this little disc, right? And that's sucking this fork in, so it's closing in our gap on the drums. We need to make sure our shoes are even and symmetrical because there's a little bit of play um, up and down when these shoes aren't inside the drum. They can be moved a little bit, but this drum still does not want to go. There we go. I'd say it feels pretty good. I can spin it, but it's still dragging a little bit. Now the internet is all over the place when it comes to drum brake tightness, right? Some people say one and a quarter rotation. Um, some people say quarter rotation. For me, I just like to feel for light drag. And I like to just imagine, okay, if a wheel is on here, I don't have the brakes applied, and I'm driving down the highway, What's going to feel good that the drum brakes are going to bite and grab, but they're not going to cause resistance when I'm driving down the road. And if you guys have any information on drum brake tightness, I'm not the master of drum brakes. But that feels pretty good. It's got a little bit of spin after I'm done with it. And I'm pretty happy with that. Now we do the same thing on this side, but we still need to replace that wheel cylinder. I think I told this story before, but I was doing a set of drum brakes when I was like 18, 19 with my buddy Ryan, and I was pulling a spring off or putting a spring on with a pair of needle nose, and I slipped, and he was standing right here, and I sent the needle nose right through the side of his nose, and it pierced into his nostril and I put a hole in his nose. Crazy. And there we go, another shot out wheel cylinder.
right, now we put a little bit of anti-seize on these contact points. All right, that's pretty much max adjusted. That's nice. I can work with that. So with these brand new shoes, brand new drums, we're pretty much zero adjustment, which is okay. And it's just lightly dragging, I can hear it. So we're in good shape. Now another thing I wanna check is, let's do two ticks on the e-brake. And this one doesn't wanna spin. And driver's side is nice and locked up too. So we're in good shape, they're biting. I also wanted to see if they were engaging equally on both sides, which they are. Now to round things out for this brake overhaul, let's get some fresh brake fluid in there, pressurize the bottle, bleed all the brakes. So I'm gonna be using this pressurized brake bleeder tool from YS Tool, and all you gotta do is pull the cap, throw their adapter on, connect your adapter, and then I like to pressurize this thing up to like 20 PSI is good. Oh shit. Release. Damn, that made a mess. Maybe it didn't like this adapter. I think maybe this filter element right here is getting in the way and impeding the seal, which I usually pull those out. It's just a little screen. That adapter was not successful. This one doesn't fit because this hose is too long. So we'll see if this one wants to seal. The different adapter fit. We're not losing any pressure yet. We're at about 20 PSI on the bottle. Let's try this again. We got flow. Ran out to the parts store for some more brake fluid. That way we could flow some more fluid through these front calipers. Because uh, I just wanna make sure, make sure we don't have any air bubbles in the system. Probably gonna flush it again, maybe next week or so. But we opened up a lot of areas. These new, these brake hoses up in the front are new. Those ones in the rear, we had the wheel cylinders pulled on both rears. So better safe than sorry. All right, we're all flushed. Bleed out any remaining pressure. Disconnect our tool. Now it's a little too full, so I'm just gonna pull a little bit of fluid. I want it, you know, quarter inch down from the max. Now, just a little note about brake reservoirs. As your brake pads wear down or your brake shoes wear down, those pads are gonna get tighter and tighter into the rotor. And so that means your piston has to be extended further and further out. So your calipers are going to hold more fluid as your brakes wear down. So when you do a brake service, your bottle should be relatively low because when you compress those pistons, it's going to push fluid back up into your master cylinder. So just something to keep in mind after you do a brake flush, 
just kind of gauge where your brake measurements are at and you can set your reservoir level appropriate to how much life you have left on your brakes. And I'm going to use the rest of this can just to clean up all this residual brake fluid in the engine bay until I get it outside and I wash it this, this next week. Well folks, there you have it. Nice proper brake overhaul on the E30 project. Here's an example of our old brake fluid and here's an example of our new brake fluid. There actually is not as much difference as I thought there was going to be. Um, but I think that just goes to show how well this car was maintained before I had it. Of course, we lost a lot of fluid when we disconnected the wheel cylinders and pulled all the brake hoses. So a lot of the fluid was fresh that we added in during the flush. But it just goes to show this car was in really good shape before I got it. The rear brake overhaul was successful. We got all new shoes, new hardware. We also have new wheel cylinders on both sides. We have two new rear brake hoses, two new front brake hoses. We also fixed the odometer gear and we attempted to fix the radio. I got more parts coming today, so stay tuned. I'll have another video coming out soon. And after our next service, this thing should be ready to hit the road again. Maybe some fresh tires in the future. We're gonna be making a lot of progress here really soon. I hope you enjoyed or I hope you learned something new. And as always, folks, I will see you on my next day off. Cheers.